we all want to make films with hats, with back cloth, with rugged clothes, with leaves, because they are actually even cheaper than making films with Mercedes, with skyscrapers, with every other thing. Why we make such types of films is because of the systems. And when I talk about systems, I mean, for example, my series, Half London, I did my season one in Luganda. Then I started to look out for a market. I went to different TVs here. No one would buy. The closest channel that promised to buy, and they never bought, but they screened five of my episodes, was UBC. The person who bought, the condition was clear. My audience wants 60% English. So I had to change for my next seasons. Season four, they were like, no, not 60%. Now we want 70% English. So I changed. My actors struggled. Every other person started struggling. Some dropped out because they could not manage the conditions the systems are putting for us. The film industry is littered. The film industry is littered everywhere and ending up nowhere within the government bodies. Because we have at least five of the government bodies, each with a different mandate on film. So this person is in charge of this, the other person is in charge of this. It requires a filmmaker to loiter around before the realization of their film. So it's not even easy to make a film. For starters, to have it, whether it meets the requirements or not, it's so, so hard. The people who want to support this film industry have been confused by our endless, unclear taxation policy, which is not just expensive, but also too complex. I mean, this happens along with the absence of tax incentives and rebates, which are available in countries as near as Rwanda, Liberia, Kenya. I mean, when you invest in film, you had, when Robert was presenting, the very first time, he told you about how people get percentages back when they make films. That's what we need. I mean, if I have that in the policy and it is working, then I know who is going to give me the money to invest in the film. But for now, we don't have. But we are not going to cry. I was looking at, there's a festival going on. It's an online festival, TAF, the African Film Festival. Second year running. Now, um, it, is, it is in its second year online because of the challenges of the pandemic. There's a very beautiful documentary called Oriotia. It's, it's by, by a white lady. I, I've forgotten the name, but you can look out for tough. So these people also love these stories, and they are making them. But no one is going to tell those stories better than us. So it's unfortunate that we have compromised so much that we are even compromising story. Yes, we have compromised the language due to the systems. But why then aren't we telling the story of Nsanji, of Njabala, of Chibuko Mumbale, of Tanda? Is it still about the language? I don't think so. So the things we can keep, I think we must keep. Next thing, one, one, I told you, keep making movies, don't stop. Next thing, research, read, and rewrite. Like I told you in the beginning, we are a product of systems. It's because of the lack of specific things like public film schools that people are coming in to help by establishing 
projects like Kampala Film Development School, Kampala Film School, uh, they are teaching film school at ESOM, like so many other people are trying to help because there is a gap. Uh, it's great that formerly music, dance, and drama, Makerere MDD department uh, transformed into Makerere performing arts and film because there was a need. I, I'm always asking myself, and today I've got the platform, so I'll ask Medi. If it is possible, because UCC runs an institute where we normally have the festival, if it is possible in that institute to have a, de a department that focuses on film, it's, it's something that would be great. It, would be, it, would, it, it is something that we would gladly welcome on one of the events that now because UCC has this, you know, UCC is trying in some way or another. They are paying for people to go and study from abroad, but here they are. They have an institute, and all they need is save all that money and have a department of film. I think that would be a great thing. People will tell you about how so many of us are jacks of all trades when making our films. We are a product of systems. When I did my first film, Pivot Time, its premiere was here. 2007, October, the chief guest was the Canadian ambassador. They, they gave me about 15 million to produce the film. I spent about four months, every other day of my four months, going and sitting around, to wait for the editor to just cut about five minutes every other day on Namirembe Road. I mean, I used to sit there and what I did with the money they gave me, I bought a computer. There was a project going on school net. So I kept a computer in my home. And everything I saw this editor doing, when I went back home, I tried to do. So, not that I wanted to be an editor, but I ended up learning because I was being shut. I was being, I mean, I was blocked. I could not have my film. The premiere was on. Finally, I took a first cut to him and told him, Hey, Jonah, And we finally arranged my final film. Um, the people you see writing and directing their films, it is because of two things. One, they may not know those other people who can do those things. Two, they cannot afford them. When I started selling my movies and films to Pearl Magic, I realized there are people who have studied from different countries, directing, writing, and everything. They could not come to you when they haven't seen your film somewhere. But now they will come to you and say, you know, I can write. No, I studied that in Sweden. Oh, you know, I did this, I did this, I did this. So these people are available. This is also a call out to them that you can only come together now and we take this industry to the next stage than waiting the producers who are having commission shows on Pearl Magic will tell you, hey, this one also sent me an email. They have a very big CV. They've been having their CVs and doing different things. Now we are calling out all of you. Please join the industry now. How many people who are in that audience have ever written to UCC over and complained about anything concerning content? There is only one. Charles Tiava. He's the Secretary General of Uganda Film Council. We, we, we have tried along with them, but when you go to them, they will tell you who is complaining. Who is complaining? I mean, we stay in our cars and complain, and that is where it ends. Now, from today, take note of all these other associations you have met here, the projects and especially Kampala Film Development Foundation, because they've brought us together. If you see something, for example, 
these broadcasters show our films at no cost without our consent. But all you do is you take a screenshot and complain in the filmmakers group. Let's push for implementation of the available regulations. We pay 150,000 per film, per 120 minutes to the film secretariat to classify our films. But do we complain to them if the same people are showing films that are not classified? Okay, those who have complained, the different bodies here, have we supported them? One time some person was saying, People are here talking about, you know, we need a distribution, we, we, we need a streaming platform. The systems are hindering us because of the cost of data. The industries that have grown so much, why the idea of Chibanda Express seems cheap? and viable, and why people should support it, is because it is an initiative of a company that has data. So if today we want to have another streaming platform, of course we would need to buy the data. So people who are here, you should support all those initiatives. But the system should be pushed to have incentives like data affordability so that we can promote the things that Brian talked about. Support advocates for change. I'm not saying the available regulations are gold, but they can take us somewhere. We have successfully won cases in court using the very regulations that are available. But while we use them, we need to support the people advocating for more for, for better regulations. The things they are talking about, the tax incentives, they are not available. We are using a, for example, um, a few months ago, when we went riot to the minister, Nabakova, the honorable, it was about the Stage and Entertainment Act of 1949. So we are using a year we are using a law that is actually archaic, a 1949 law to regulate an industry in 2021. So if people are pushing for transformation and changing all these things, let us support them. It may be, you may not be required to come out on the street and do so many things. It may be a post it may be a retweet. Let it go on and on and on and on and on. We've watched authentic African pieces. And I can testify they stand test of time. Let's keep our authentic pieces. We are going to get there. And finally why we need to keep them. It's the virgin territory they have not explored. That's why I was telling you about Oriotia. That's why very many people are coming here to tell our stories. I come from Uganda Film Council. We are talking to government and pushing for a film policy at different levels. When you come across that, some of the things we are, we, I have discussed, some of the things I have discussed are entailed in there. If you find it anywhere, please push for it. It's, it's, it's a good document for all of us, for God and my country. Thank you.